Hey, what's going on guys? It's Wild Bill Kelso. I do apologize for the lack of videos I've made in the past regarding Air Corps reenacting or the collecting of Air Corps memorabilia. Um, I just never really had the time in the past couple of months, but I do now. And so today I'm just going to give you guys an update on some items that I've acquired uh, since my last video. Um, so we're going to start right over here. Right here we have an original B4 May West Life Preserver. The B4 is one of two life preservers that the Army Air Force had produced and issued to its fighter pilots and bomber crewmen during the war. Um, the first one was the B3. It was similar in design and construction. Um, the thing is with the B3 is it's made of a different fabric. It's made out of a much lighter fabric. Um, it has a leather patch in the center. This one, it's actually like a rubberized material. So it's a lot more rigid and more stiff. Um, this one is actually dated 1943, which is a really, really nice date to have for a, a B3, B4 May West. Um, this one's in really, really nice shape. Um, it's still very pliable. It still has the CO2 canisters, one on each side. Inside would be a CO2 cartridge. The cartridges have long since been removed, um, but if you had to inf bail out over water and you had to inflate the life vest, you would just pull these down and the May West would inflate with CO2. Um, the one thing about it though, it used to have, B4s normally have a die marker packet that was like glued in right here. Um, this, one's, this one has been removed and that's actually a very common feature I see on a lot of original B4s. The die marker pack has been removed um, either by the collector or someone other than the collector because they might have had a fear that the die marker would just, you know, tear open and ruin the May West. But the die marker was originally for, its purpose was, is if you were in the water, you had to bail out over water, uh, and an airplane flew over, you could take the die marker, open it up, um, and the water around you would turn like a bright yellow color, so the pilot flying overhead would be able to see you. Um, but this one was removed, and I'm not going to worry about it, because that's a really common thing I see on original B4s. Um, the hoses that you would blow into if the May West started, if the life preserver started to deflate, are still intact. They're not deteriorated. Um, and overall, it's, you know, still very flexible, still very pliable, still has a lot of life left in it. Um, it has all the original straps. Um, I don't think I'm going to wear it too often with a parachute harness over it. I wore my harness over it once at an air show, and I started getting, like, these marks right here with a buckle. Oh, came to rest. Um, so I think when I wear this for reenacting, I'm just going to wear it by itself. But overall, it's a really, really nice addition to the collection. You can find one in good shape for around $200 or so, which is actually a really, really good deal. Um, next on the list is this. This is my reproduction B5 flight helmet. Excuse me. My B5 flight helmet. This was made by a company called Eastman Leather Clothing in England. Um, it's a really, really nice reproduction. The B-5 is an early war flight helmet, um, but it did see service all through until about mid to late 1943. By that point, the B-5 had largely been replaced by other types of flight helmets. Um, but this is perfect for like if you're portraying a bomber crewman in 1942, 1943 in the 8th Air Force. Um, it's got a really, really nice label on the inside, if you can see it right here. Let's see. Yep, type B5. Eastman really went above and beyond to get the label right and the materials correct. Uh, but it says right here, Roughwear, Con Roughwear Clothing in Middletown, PA. That's an actual wartime company that made B5 helmets during the war. Um, and I have my reproduction B7 goggles. These are made by What Price Glory. These are really, really nice reproductions. Um, and they're perfect for portraying a bomber crewman. Uh, in 1942 and 1943 so they go really really nice um, and I have the reproduction receivers earphone receivers these were also made by what price glory um, it's a little longer than I thought it would be um, but it's all right it it works so yeah that's that um, definitely if you're going to be portraying a bomber crewman in like the 1942 1943 and even early 1944 um, era the B the B5 helmet is definitely um, a good uh, helmet to go with. Um, so over here we have a new addition 
This is an original A4 flight suit. I have a reproduction from What Price Glory that I use, but I'm going to start using this a lot more because I really like it. It's got like a nice, it's got a darker color green to it. And I also really like that it has the zippers on the pockets, which is something you see on a lot of original A4s. What Price Glory doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, this is in really, really nice shape. There's no moth holes, no rips or tears. Still has the original label. It's a size 46, what fits me perfectly, especially when I wear my other flight clothing underneath it. Um, but yeah, it's in really got nice shape, and it's a really, really nice addition to the collection and also to the reenacting. Up next, we have an original pair of A6 flying boots. These are rare as hen's teeth. Um, these are the early pattern A6 flight boots. Um, I'm not sure as to the exact year these were made, but they're early because they've got the brown rubber soles. And they are ra also rare because not just because of the shape, they're in their beautiful shape. But they're a size extra large, if you see right there. Yeah, so these are really, really nice. I don't think I'm going to wear these reenacting or anything like that because they're just they're too nice to wear. Um, I have another pair of A6 boots that I'm going to use for reenacting purposes because they're already beat up. Um, but these ones, I think, are just going to stay on the shelf <laughs> or in the display case um, in, my, uh, in my living room. So, yeah, that's that. And last but not least, I have my new reproduction A2 flight jacket. This is a work of art. I ordered this a couple months ago. I just got it in May. It's a reproduction of the Roughwear 27752 contract. This was a 1942 contract, and this was made by a company called Diamond Clothing. Um, he's in Oklahoma, and he makes amazing A2 jackets. I highly recommend them. He's a really nice guy, and he is really attentive to detail. All the details about this are super accurate. Um, it even has the... Oh, not that pocket. In this pocket, he even included like the maker's tag on the inside of the pocket. If I can get that open. Yay. Right there. And I even got an original Acme Thunderer whistle. And this actually has the Air Ministry seal on the side of it. The Thunderer whistle was something you see very common, worn on A2s in the 8th Air Force by fighter pilots and bomber crews. It was just sort of like a trinket that they just wore on their A2 jackets. Um, but yeah, this is really, really nice, and I'm really glad I finally got a really nice quality A2 jacket. So, um, yeah. So that's about everything. Um, I'm going to make more videos in the future um, comparing original items to reproduction items, and I got some more videos I'm going to make about some Air Corps dress uniforms I have and things like that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you all take care, and I'll catch you next time.